So not only would you have owed taxes, you would have your employees in that case. No, I don't, I never do that. I'll make the money, I'll send them something bit by bit. Yeah. I haven't been paid in five years. Over 200. Five years? How did he survive this whole time? What's up guys, it's your boy Alan again, back with another video. And today, we're gonna watch another episode of Bar Rescue. But, before we start, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And uh, let's go check this out. You know bad. Yeah, I know bad. And we are in front of Friar Tux. Friar Tux. Look at the flags on the top of the peaks with the blue roofs. Why is there a castle? Is this a mini golf place or a sports bar? 32,000 cars a day drive to this place. We're not going to pull them in with that kind of an exterior. Yeah, probably not my first choice. Can you guys stay out of my kitchen? So there's Ivan. He's the owner. He doesn't. So is he also the chef? Why does he say, get out of my kitchen? He's not dressed like somebody who's about to cook. There's Sammy. Sammy's the manager. What can I get for you? There's Trista. She's a bartender. She goes out with Sam. They're engaged. There's a line. You have got to be kidding me. You have two employees that are engaged. One is a manager, one is a bartender. Isn't that a conflict of interest? You can't have a manager and... Oh, this can't be happening. I need the bartender. And there's Anjali, another bartender. We try to make this bar effect. And she's drinking. So obviously they drink as much as they want. So Anjali's just playing pool with customers. Oh my God, I thought that was a customer. You have an employee who's playing pool with a customer? I understand it's slow. When it's slow, there's other things you can do, like wipe down the bottles, clean up the mess. You gotta look for something to do, okay? You can't be playing pool with a customer. You get a chance to talk to Angelis who's playing pool. For drinking in the middle of your shift, really? Yeah, and uh, they just told the owner, they have two managers, they know about it, but they're not doing anything about it. Yeah, in between my cooking, Sammy, I'll be right there. This is why you can't have a manager that's cooking. You gotta have a chef. Yes, there are chef owners of a lot of places, but you gotta have a manager on the floor that has some kind of authority, right? Did you check your stick? Sloppy! Did you point your stick? Sloppy, this pocket, did you mm -hmm. point your stick? You know how many balls are in this game? Not including the ones in your pants, guys. <sighs> okay, first of all, you shouldn't be playing pool with your customers. And second, you can't be talking to your customers like that. I don't, what's, why is she here? Like, you have two managers here. How come they're not doing anything about this? This is probably not the first time that she's been doing this. And they've probably been letting her get away with this for such a long time. John's expert spies enter Friar Tux, a 4,000 square foot space featuring a long L-shaped bar, open dining area, and a space for pool tables. You know, I would say that this castle exterior doesn't make any sense. Maybe it was something else before it became a sports bar, but the inside, the interior is actually not that bad. It actually looks like it has good bones. What can I get right now? Martini. Yeah. I'm gonna have a Manhattan. Manhattan. We do not have any vermouth for the Manhattan. You have got to be joking. Why would you not have vermouth? There's... <laughs> it's... Manhattan is a very common drink and it's not just you know sweet vermouth isn't just for Manhattan's You also have other drinks like Negroni's. How hard is it just to get a small bottle of you know Carpano Antica or something? There's no excuse to not have any vermouth. And then what kind of martini do you want? Um, can I get a kettle one? Not I don't have a kettle one. No? No. What? How do you not have kettle one? That's like one of the most common vodka brands. To be honest, if I could only have one vodka in my bar, it would probably be kettle one. It's like reasonably priced and it's also a premium vodka. What are you serving here? Plastic bottle vodka? Like how do you not have kettle one? Do you have Ciroc? No. Ciroc's really good. They have no kettle one, they have no Ciroc. Those are two of the most popular vodkas in America. I have Smirnoff vodka. Let's do Smirnoff. Yeah, all right. Can you, can you make it dirty for him? Yes. Okay, they have Smirnoff, but it doesn't justify not having Kettle One. How do you upsell your martinis if your premium vodka is Smirnoff? When it comes to martinis and almost any type of vodka drinks, it's all about upselling. That's probably one of the most practical uses for having a good selection of vodka. And then a crown of gum. I like it really dirty. <laughs> Look at that. When you pour out of a one point... They're using handles. The problem with handles is that you think that you're saving money by buying things in bulk. 
I mean, first, it looks horrible. The second, in high volume situations, it's not as maneuverable as a standard 750 or a 1 liter. There's a time cost that you need to consider. And the amount of money you save from getting a handle compared to just a standard 750 or standard 1 liter, it's not that much. It might save you money, but the guests aren't expected to pay any less for it. And it's also a lot harder to control, so you also have to take into consideration of the potential spills that you might get from picking up that heavy handle. With the different bottle sizes and spouts, her pores can't be accurate. What's your name? Trista. Oh, Trista, nice to meet you. And she grabs it by the bowl. You gotta grab the martini glass by the stem. She's a bartender. She should know this. Stem glasses, like martini glasses, don't have ice. So by holding it like that, you're gonna warm it up. What do you like here? I like the four castle burgers. Those are really good. Okay. All right, you said it. We're so Can I get meat? Yes, of course. Why is the owner cooking all the food? So he is the chef. Why is he cooking? Is he qualified to cook? Why is he dressed like that? That's not the right attire for cooking. He can't run his business from back here in the kitchen. So what are those meatballs? Those must be so That's... How is he gonna cook the burger like that? Why is it not flattened? Is he gonna smash that? I mean, look at the... It's already brown, so he flipped it. So that's how he's cooking them on purpose? It's not gonna cook even. The middle's gonna be raw. So he cooks it as a ball and then flattens it to a burger. Okay, why? Why not have it flat and have it portioned out? Because if you cook it like that, it might break. So he's sautéing chicken wings. That's interesting. Yeah, you would think that you would fry them. Huh. Did you see him handle that pan? He can flip in a pan. I, I, it's not so easy. His knife skills aren't bad. This guy actually knows how to cook. Okay, that's strange. That's some pretty good knife skills. But why is he cooking the burgers like that? That's weird. Like a piece of leather. Black? No, that's the burger patty that's overcooked. Mm -mm. Sorry, bro. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Don't do it, bro. Shower. Mm -mm. <laughs> Chicken's raw. So you have the burgers that are overcooked and the chicken is undercooked. We saw his knife skills. He knows what he's doing. This makes it even worse. It's one thing if you don't know what you're doing and you screw up because you don't know any better. But it's another thing is when you know what you're doing and you're screwing up because you do know better. And this guy's place is falling apart. So you think that with everything on the line that he would care a lot more. Listen, they said the wings are bad. They're raw. I can guarantee they're not. Give me one. Give me one. I want to see one. I want to see one in the trash. I'll get him. Oh my God, what's wrong? Okay, whenever, okay. Whenever somebody sends food back to the kitchen, you have to show it just so you let the kitchen know, okay? Like, if you're gonna tell the chef or the cook, the chicken's raw and why would you throw it in the trash? Let him see it so he knows, hey, look, let's say it's a fryer. The, you gotta check the oil because maybe it's not hot enough. Like, why did he just throw it in the trash instead of showing it to him? If he was right there. This makes no sense. Bonafide schmuck. It's not that late for him to be this surly. 15 of you guys out there, let's get this shit out or it's gonna be cool. So he's also the expo? Wow, this is like a lot of work for just one person and on top of that, he's the owner. He shouldn't be managing the kitchen because he can't pay attention on what's going on in the front of the house. Those are the extra crispy. Okay. Now they're gonna come back and say, oh, those aren't crispy enough. These guys are losing. He's complaining about something that didn't even happen yet. This guy already decided that it was gonna be a bad day. Look how slow it is. The night just started and he's already grumpy and the customers can't hear it. Imagine this, you sit down and you hear the chef complaining about people potentially sending back their food. Potentially sending it back. It didn't even happen yet. $4,000 a month and with his attitude, that'll never change. You guys get this right or next time you're wearing it. Why is he talking to people like that? He can't talk to your employees like this. I mean, I've never seen anybody speak to his staff that way. It's gonna be such a depressing workplace. Any day now. <sighs> what is he doing? They're not gonna come there any faster if you press it. If you looked outside, you can see that the servers are actually talking to people, working, and they're busy for a legitimate reason. It's not like they're being lazy and just talking to each other. They're in the middle of something right now. And now you ring this bell, it doesn't just frustrate the workers, but the customers are hearing it too. You have another order of uh, chips and I don't want to hear it. Just put it through the machine. 
so you don't talk to me. He's talking to this not only with the servers, but also with the other manager. I'm surprised there's people who still work here. So what's wrong with him? His name is Ivan, and he works here at Prior Tax. That's what's wrong with him. Ivan, I'm getting ready to send an order in right now. Yeah, well, that's nice. The kitchen's closed. Ivan yeah. said that he... He just decided the kitchen's closed just because he's not having a good day. <laughs> what the heck? He just gave up? It's bad. Sammy, he's just Sammy. He's fine. He's not fine because he's pissed off right now. That's something new! <laughs> He's degrading everyone. Why? Why? What does this do? Like, why is he so grumpy? Oh my god, Sammy's bad! Who gives a This guy's a idiot. You're an ass! I'm the only that's trying to keep everybody employed! <sighs> why is he so mad? You got two things that got sent back. Rightfully so. We got the burger was cooked incorrectly, that got overcooked. And you got chicken that was raw. He was already mad before that food got sent back. What's his problem? Like, how could you disrespect your own coworkers like this? Ivan Vujic. John Taffer. John Taffer. Nice to meet you. Heard about you. Well, you're dressed for success, aren't you? Hold that's on, a guy let me who's... button up. Let me button up. How much money you lose this month? Yeah, like I said, that's not the right tire. And the fact that he wasn't buttoned up, that's a hazard. That can go over the flames or something. Probably a four to five grand. Either. Four to five grand. Yeah, and this, yeah, is, yeah. this is how you try? Um, this is how you fail. And how many times did you tell your employees to go themselves uh, tonight? Probably 150. He knows he's doing this. He knows he's mistreating his employees. Your bar is failing. You should be begging for the help, not try to make them quit. This is such a toxic work environment. They're not gonna feel bad for you if this place fails. Somebody comes in here, orders chicken. It was raw, correct, Sam? And the customer's in for sending it back. Yeah, something like that, yeah. Everything is everybody else's fault, right? Whose fault is it really? His. Who's in charge of this place, girls? I have I know, just like blaming everyone except for himself. Blames the customers for sending things back. Does he treat you with respect? Who was the Sam? Ivan. Ivan was the Yeah, but you're acting like an right now. <gasps> What's wrong with this guy? He knows that he's disrespecting his staff. He knows that he's complaining about people sending back his food. Like, he knows everything, but he doesn't admit that this is his fault. He's complaining about everything that's happened today and doesn't realize that, or he doesn't admit that it's all his fault. This place is failing because of him. Yeah, but you're right. acting like an <laughs> right now. So <gasps> leaving. Good luck, guys. Bye. Ivan. What a Did he just walk out? Why did he cuss him out? He wasn't even yelling at him. He was just asking the employees, and that's their answers. It's not. Oh my god, this is insane. Good luck, guys. Bye. Ivan. What a you are. You gotta be a like that. Ivan. Why would you call no, me? Is this for real? The servers and bartenders are reprimanding the manager? I would have to give them credit. They are so calm and grounded through all of his yelling. I don't know if I can handle somebody yelling at me like that. No. Go talk to him. I'm not talking him. to nobody. Ask, ask him to come back and help no, us. I'm the no. No. Dude, no. it's your bar. It's, it's, you, you're gonna let it fail just because you're an ego? Everyone is trying to help you. I'm like very surprised at how nice everyone is to him. He should be thankful that he has staff like this. John, we need your help. Ivan had the opportunity of a lifetime and he just blew it. How about the breaking point? What's going on here? We got tax issues. We owe like 27,000 taxes. Ooh. Ooh -hoo -hoo. So not only are they losing money, they still owe money that they don't even have. Wow, this is crazy. Like, this owner, he just letting this ship sink. Restaurant business, didn't you? I've been in this business a long time, since I was probably 15. Uh, I love being in the kitchen. That's my passion. You chased me out of the parking lot last night. Okay, if you like to cook, cooking is really hard, okay? I'll admit that. You know, there's a quote, you know, if you can't handle the heat, you know, stay out of the kitchen. Just because somebody can cook doesn't mean they can cook in a kitchen, like a professional kitchen. Like, it's way different. I can cook pretty good food for myself, for my family, for my friends, but it's different when you're in the kitchen and, you know, the tickets are coming out. You gotta keep your cool, especially when you send out 
things like raw chicken. You could potentially get someone sick. Like these are things that you have to think about. Crying. Where were you? Uh, you upset me. You called me an a like 500 times. You got a like. Right. I have to be an in this. You got to be grounded. You don't have to get emotional over small things. Like you're the leader, okay? You got to act like the leader, not like some five-year-old kid throwing a fit. Would you want to go to a place that has this negative vibe and hang out and have a drink? No. Then why the f would anyone else? Right? What are you doing? Treading water. But you're sinking. Yeah, because they're action. pulling me down. They're oh my god, I can't believe he just said that. They're pulling him. He he's saying that about his own staff, the ones who begged him to apologize to John Taffer. You're really gonna blame your staff for all of this. Like I said before, they don't need to be here. Like they can leave, but they're only here to make sure that this place doesn't sink. They're watching out for your back and he's treating them like this. It makes no sense. And it's not like yesterday where, you know, he was behind the kitchen and he got stressed out. Okay, right now he should be calmed down by now and he still thinks the same way. So not only would you have owed taxes, you would have your employees enough. Baby. No, I don't. I never do that. I'll make the money. I'll send them something bit by bit. I've never done that. When was the last time you got paid? Um, it's a month behind. <sighs> so not only is he disrespecting his workers, he's not even paying them. That's the legal obligation that you have. I am surprised they haven't walked out by now. They're being mistreated, hostile work environment, and they're doing this without getting paid. And he thinks they're the ones that are dragging him down. Yeah. I haven't been paid in five years. Over 250 weeks. Five years? How long has this place been opened? How did he survive this whole time without getting paid in five years? I can't even fathom that idea. I can't believe he's still here too. It's crazy. Counting up the weeks makes it a lot harder to take in because it seems a lot longer than five years. It's pretty sad that they don't get how much I've put in into this. <sighs> I mean, we saw earlier, he was crying and begging for help. He gave away five years of his life for this place and he got nothing back in return except being insulted on a daily basis. Like, nobody deserves to be treated like this. This is not just a bar, it's home. I think all of us work our hardest and if we wanted this place to fail, we would just- Wasn't she playing pool earlier? She was the only one, uh, that's probably almost as bad as the owner. Like everyone else is doing their jobs. Just walk you out. Shot in the middle of your shift. Everybody here is guilty of drinking on their shift. Really? That's so a complete you lie. Do, you do shots. That was a one-time deal, okay? Not a one-time deal, multiple. I know, we, we saw it on tape. How do you deny this? Last night you were playing pool with customers. What were you supposed to be doing? Working. So when she has a couple of drinks, what do you do as a manager? I should fire her. Why wouldn't you have fired her yesterday? He's the brick wall. He makes the final decision, not me. Yeah, I mean, this person is not working, drinking your booze. You're paying this person. Well, I mean, maybe not. <laughs> but you're supposed to be paying. Why would you not fire her? Especially if this is not the first time this has happened. So you've wanted to give her another chance? I did, and I gave her several chances, yes. Okay. Do you want to give her one more? Absolutely. Really? So everyone, <laughs> you're going to blame every server for dragging you down, but the one server that isn't working and drinking on the job, you're going to give one more chance. Are you kidding me? If there's one person that is dragging you down, that's her. Why would I want to put a bar in and give the keys to you? You come off like an idiot. <laughs> I am. He's, he's an idiot. He's blaming the bartenders who are actually working. He's blaming his, his manager, insulting him every day. The one person who's drinking on the job, playing pool with the customers while on the clock. Why are you sympathizing with her and antagonizing everyone else? Like, this makes no sense. I am the guy that has to take care of everything. I got too many responsibilities. Well, you're not the only one. I don't want to hear it. I want somebody to come to the plate and swing the damn back for but a while. You, you, you have a partner, you have a manager, you're going against what he's recommending. He's not doing this by himself. He has somebody who wants to help him, but he's not giving him the authority. I mean, he's actually taking it away. Where are you going? Now you're going to give up? If you were betting your future on it, would you bet that he changes himself or not? I would, because I think it could happen. I believe in Ivan. Oh my gosh, shut up. You're 
Of course you're gonna defend him because he's defending you. This has become like middle school, like people taking sides. Of all the employees' opinions, yours probably matter the least. You care the least. So the first cocktail I'm gonna teach you to make today is a dirty vodka martini. One ounce olive brine, one and a half ounces of Smirnoff number 21 vodka. You wanna make sure it's a- He's really teaching them how to make a dirty martini. So you're telling me that these bartenders did not know how to make a dirty martini before? Who trained all these people? I know these girls were hard working, but did nobody train them? Good sound shake. This is the Smirnoff 21 Dirty Vodka Martini. All right, so stirring cocktails is a lot different than shaking cocktails. We're melting the ice, mixing the ingredients. So uh, earlier he shook the, the dirty martini. So martinis generally are stirred, but because of the olive brine, which some people consider a juice, and hence uh, you shake it. But if it was not a dirty martini, it would have been stirred. I don't know where you guys or who came up with the concept of the four little mini castles or whatever the hell that was, but that was a joke. You didn't flatten them out. You were pressing the burgers. I, I was smashed. You shouldn't have to do that. You do your pre-smash. I think what he was trying to do before was doing like a smash burger style which he did incorrectly because you're supposed to smash it like almost as soon as it hits the grill and the way that he did it was so strange like he kind of smashed it after flipping it and it only browned the tops and bottoms so that makes no sense and I don't know why anyone would cook like that there you go. How many lemon drops do you need? I'm gonna do one at a time That is the grossest Manhattan I've seen Olives on it? I need Are you serious? She put olives on a Manhattan there's only two drinks today, the Dirty Martini and the Manhattan. And the night just started. You seriously got those two drinks mixed up? You've never seen a Manhattan before? Oh, how come I got so many burgers over there? When I started the two, you jumped in and you made an extra two, that's all. You gotta communicate with each other who's working on what so you don't double mix food items that now you have extra burgers that are going nowhere. And it's also, if you're gonna have more than one person in the kitchen, you gotta have stations. You can't be having two people work the same station. Otherwise, things like this will happen. We're running at least over 10 minutes. Flip the thing around and shake it with the tin down. Okay. Having trouble so far. Yeah. Come on, go, girls! Let's go! <sighs> These bartenders have no experience. She doesn't even know how to put the tin on the glass. You can't just like push it in like that. You gotta hit it. So make sure that it's super tight. Otherwise, it might leak when you shake it. Ivan, they are freaking buried up front. You guys all right? How we doing? Well, the... <sighs> Why are they putting both managers in the back? Now you have the cook or chef has to come out and talk to the bartenders on what's going on. We just got all these incoming, John. He's looking at five burger, five wings, one burger, no tomato. I'm looking at that grill right now. Looks like you might be short a burger. And earlier they had two extra burgers and now they're short a burger. Are they just randomly just throwing burgers? They need to work on their communication. I need three lemon drops, three martinis. What is that? Who's that oh, I'm getting pulled in all direction right now. Am I helping them? Helping Sammy? You no, do not help the bartenders. <laughs> you're the cook. You gotta focus on the food. I've never... I know that you're not a manager, but you can't leave the kitchen by itself. Yes, the bar needs help right now, but you still have food to cook. Like, we already saw that the burgers, the count is not correct. Tell me, where do you think you're best served right now? Let's get this food out, and then I'll go back out there. Now, right now, I'm seeing those burgers not patted out right. No, I'm, I'm on it. <sighs> Why do they look like that? They should be portioned out as part of the prep. That looks horrible. Are you kidding me? For the love of God. They just don't want to burn. Okay. I'm sorry. This is BS. <laughs> oh, Jeez, and man, like, I, and I thought he was folding on the other night when it was slow. Now there's like actual customers ordering so much food. This is like way too much work for one person in the kitchen. I know that the other manager, Sammy, he was going back and forth. But once again, that also kind of creates confusion because now you have people throwing burger patties at the same time and you're double making tickets. I know that he's trying to help, but going back and forth between front of the house and the back of the house without any defined roles, it sometimes can make things worse. And the fries are too soggy. The fries are too soggy. You gotta give them that same consistent flavor all the time. This is not going well. 
He's a lot calmer than he was on the first night, but the quality of food is still not that much better. Just free. You got it. Let's get this food out. How much longer on the burger? Uh, 10 minutes. Okay. Because they're thick and they're juicy. All right. You see, he didn't say <laughs> you. <laughs> and look, he's smiling. Give her a smile. Yeah. See? <laughs> the food is still getting sent back, but his attitude is so much better. You just gotta be grounded, keep a straight face. Things like that are gonna happen when it gets busy. But you need to stay calm, make sure not to yell at your employees, otherwise their morale goes down, which is only gonna make things worse. You're a team, you're in this together. You know, he was in this element, he was calmer. Hats off to you, man. You, know, you, you really Thank showed you. a serious attitude shift tonight. I'm Thank proud you. of you. It's nice not to be pissed all night. Right, I, I agree. <laughs> Yeah, like, the service still wasn't perfect, and yeah, they still they didn't do that well, but at least don't drag your co-workers down with a negative attitude. At least nobody was complaining that you were complaining. When you think about castles, what do you think of, Chef? Thinking York, thinking, like, France, Germany. Germany? Yeah. Yeah, like, I wonder why they didn't go with the castle theme if it's shaped like a castle. What do you got in here? I'm using a nice dark beer with a little bit of sweetness to it. I want these broths to take that flavor. All because right. what we're going to do is we're going to put them on a nice roll with a nice whole grain muck. Yeah, you got to cook the sausages in beer. <laughs> Secret that I learned a long time ago. Don't boil them in water. Ready to see your bar? I'm ready to see it. I've worked hard on this one. There was so much that I had to do, Ivan. I needed an extra 12 hours or so to do it. It's a castle. So yeah, like I said earlier, this restaurant, when they showed the blueprint, had some pretty good bones, but it's also pretty big. So I can see why they needed extra time to work on this. Can you see it? Yes. Oh, oh my God. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> Whoa, that looks so different. It still has the castle look, but it's like less of a mini golf theme and looks more like, almost like a real castle. Cause the way that the light shines and the texture. Oh my god, this looks so cool. I know the outside got improved a lot, but inside they actually went full medieval castle look now. I didn't change your bar top because it fit our concept. I got Baselight Corporation to provide all- That's cool that they just kept it the way it is. Earlier when they looked at it, there wasn't anything wrong with it. Hey, if you enjoyed that, don't forget to check out these other videos as well. And please leave on the comment section on what videos I should react to next. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next one.